Kia ora and welcome to the last day of Get Into Gaming. During the week we have talked to many different people in the industry and a common theme is present among all our guests. Be passionate about what you do, keep learning and don't be afraid to fail guys. And that the pathways into gaming for everyone is different. Here it is. Tihei Modi Ora. My name is Nana and I will be your host for the last day. Just a little bit about myself. I was born and raised here in Rotorua, did my schooling here at Akura Kaupapa and moved up to Auckland, which I started and I presented in a couple of shows called Pukoro and Tiki Tour. And also I jumped into a little bit of voiceovers, uh, ranging from Te Reo Māori to English y un poco de español. Enough about me, let's get back into gaming. Today is all about exploring some of the different pathways out there by highlighting some of the groups and institutions around Aotearoa New Zealand who are working to provide you all out there with the skills, training and experience to follow a possible career within the industry. Let's take a look. <laughs> Digital Natives Academy, a non-profit, was established in 2014 to encourage young people wanting to enter the digital tech industry the power to create, transform, shape and develop their own digital tools. Digital Natives Academy. DNA's vision is to inspire the next generation of digital leaders. DNA's been a big help for me in terms of pathways and trying to find my way through what I really want to do and being able to trace my dreams. We do this through three poses, coding, animation and esports. Through that we channel the different career pathways that the kids in the rangatahi can take. You can't make games without animation, the same with coding, you can't make a game without coding. My name is Sasha Roderick. I'm a general manager and program coordinator here at DNA and we've found that digital technology is one of the fastest growing industries here in New Zealand and that's why it's so critical that we help prepare Dangatahi for these jobs. Our foundation is based on a Te Ao Māori worldview and we provide Kopapa Māori and Matauranga Māori program delivery. Te Ao Māori is important in the growth of technology because technology needs a tikam of some sort uh, to be more connected, to be more included and uh, to know a lot more about ourselves. Importantly, Digital Natives Academy is about whānau. What we want to do is provide a safe place for rangatai, for tamariki, for whānau, for our koeke to come and learn, share and exchange everything they have. So welcome to Digital Natives Academy, no mai haramai. During the week, many of our manuhiri have spoken about some of the many resources available online. In this segment, we're going to show you some of our favourite programmes to use and what they do. Canva is a graphic design platform used to create social media graphics, presentations, posters, documents and other visual content. The app includes templates for users to use. The platform is free to use with most of their tools available but also offers paid subscriptions for more intensive tools.
from garages to hall to stadiums and right now here at Armageddon Expo. We love video games and we love sharing our passion with you and everyone. <laughs> Birthday parties, LAN events, corporate events, esports tournament, we've done it all. We've got PC gaming, consoles, racing and even chess dance. We're providing a bridge between social gaming and competitive gaming. See this? This is our gaming trailer. We're driving all around the country so we're bringing gaming to you and we're gonna make sure you have a memorable experience. Audacity is a free, open-source, digital audio editing and recording application software. Available for Windows, Mac, Linux and other similar operating systems. In addition to recording audio from multiple sources, Audacity can be used for post-processing of all types of audio by adding effects such as normalization, trimming and fading in and out. Audacity has also been used to record and mix entire albums. Greetings! Welcome to Chloris 14, your new habitat to provide beautiful bouquets to the galaxy. We have plenty of places for you to care and tend for flowers. It is so good to have you here. I'm your horticultural assistant and delivery system, but you can call me Hans. And this is for all you gamers who would like to get into live streaming, OBS. OBS, or Open Broadcaster Software, is free and open source software for video recording and live streaming. For beginners and pros, engage your viewers, monetize your broadcast and grow your channel. Join millions of streamers who use OBS to record, stream and upload to Facebook, Instagram and more.
Unreal Engine is a free-to-use game engine developed by Epic Games. First showcased in the 1998 first-person shooter game Unreal, initially developed for PC first-person shooters, it has since been used in a variety of genres of three-dimensional games and has seen adoption by other industries, most notably the film and television industry. The Unreal Engine features a high degree of portability, supporting a wide range of desktop, mobile, console and virtual reality platforms. Kia ora, I'm Stephen Knightley and I am the Chief Operating Officer at a video game studio called Rocketworks. And the next time you're in downtown Auckland at the waterfront, if you look up at the PWC Tower, that's the tallest building um, in downtown Auckland, the top floor is us, a video game studio. So in a building full of accountants and lawyers and business consultants, the top floor is actually a creative industry, a video game studio. And I suppose it's what I wanted to reassure parents of teenagers and students who are looking to get into creative technology as a career, that yes, this is a real thing that exists. The video games industry in New Zealand um, last year in 2020 earned over $320 million. And most of that was exports that we sent to the rest of the world. So that makes us bigger than New Zealand's local film industry, and bigger than the music industry, and actually makes us one of the biggest software exporters in New Zealand. It's growing about 40% per year, and the industry is hungry for talent. We're hiring, um, creating about 150 new jobs every single year, and that's just within entertainment video games. Uh, the skills that you need to make a video game, you know, the technology, the design, the entrepreneurial thinking, they're also in really high demand in other industries as well, like other software industries, the film industry, and even education. So one of the things I say to, to parents when they ask me about the games industry is that even a failed game developer ends up becoming an incredibly skilled app developer or web developer. Uh, the skills they learn are easily transferable to other careers. Gaming can also be quite a nice way to motivate students to study more or study some more serious topics. So the type of skills that they need are going to be um, maths, but mo both maths with statistics and maths with calculus, um, as well as English and social studies. Um, if your school offers digital technologies, that's fantastic uh, for them to get hands-on experience creating digital media and interactive media. What I find often is if there's a student who's really motivated about gaming, it's up to them maybe to say to their teacher, hey, for my project this term, I want to do a video game. I want to do um, an interactive app, or I want to do some augmented reality or virtual reality. But once they make that request of a teacher, the New Zealand curriculum has a whole bunch of boxes that they could easily put that project into. Now, the, the trick I think um, when you're talking to students about wanting to get into game development is it's easy for them to spend hours and hours every week playing games. And the challenge that you need to give to our students is to not just play the game, but to create something in the game. Even if it's taking Fortnite and then modding it um, or making creative levels. Or in Minecraft, sure, you do lots of making, but can they do something more sophisticated? Uh, the challenge is to get them from just playing games to maybe downloading a game engine like Unity or Unreal Engine, which are free. They're free student versions of them out there. And then actually starting to make the game. And that's the next step that after a little while they'll realize what's involved in that. Um, so don't let them just tell you that since they're playing 20 hours a fortnight a week that they're going to become a professional game developer or esports um, professional. The step they need to take is to actually creating the games. But once they do, they'll find there's a huge support network for that. Um, there are professional industry meetups in most cities in New Zealand for the games industry. And we're really welcoming of students. Uh, sometimes we have weekend game jams, which are again opportunities for students even to, to get involved. And once you get to tertiary education, there are specialist degrees in most New Zealand universities and a whole bunch of private training institutes that teach game development these days as a profession. And they've got good links into the industry. So as a game studio, you know, we go to those universities, we go to places like the Media Design School and UB colleges to recruit. And you know, we're looking for those smart, students, in particular those who have actually taken the time to follow their passions and make their own games at home by themselves or with some friends. And genuinely, we're looking for diversity too. Um, there's enough you know, middle-aged white guys in the industry like me, but we're really interested in the unique perspectives that different people bring to our sector as well. So um, the games industry, it's serious, um, it's real, um, it's permanent, good-paying jobs, 
and you know, we would love to, you know, we're really excited as an industry to keep growing and just create the type of jobs that we think New Zealand needs more of. Um, we'd love to have your students and children be part of that industry. Sketchbook is a graphic software app intended for expressive drawing and concept sketching. It is free for personal use. Sketchbook features a simple user interface and has painting and drawing tools such as pencils, markers and brushes. It uses pressure sensitive features of digital drawing pads, tablet computers and smartphones to create effects similar to traditional materials. A screenshot tool is also included for annotations allowing one to show content during meetings and to add notes for review. The program can also create flipbooks or animations and it supports layers with the ability to import from and export to Adobe Photoshop. Other features include rulers, brush, customization and canvas rotation. I was looking for a university that was as creative as I wanted to be. It's a completely different feeling. It's pouring all this creativity into this one thing that's there forever. When we can find somebody who's done a degree, it gives us a lot of material to kind of talk through. We really want somebody that uh, speaks the gaming language. So somebody that has already made games uh, will have acquired that. MVS did give me a skill set which prepares me to work in the VFX industry. And I can proudly say right now, I'm working as a studio animator for Weta Digital. design school really works cohesively with the industry because we have industry specialists working here. We have live briefs. Got a job before I graduated, which is awesome. Me and my friends, so we've, we've decided we want to pursue ourselves as a company. Design is such a powerful tool to get a message out to people. Very social aware. They're, they are very concerned with the environment. They're very concerned with transportation. She was so happy and she was saying for me, it's the first time someone not disabled is thinking about us. I always say Torrance and MGS and Think is about the head, the hand and the heart. The knowledge, the hand, how we apply ourselves, and the heart, how our purpose is driven through, through a real sense of humanity. Uh, if I could make you know, any little kid happy after he watches this film, I think my job as a young Māori uh, filmmaker has pretty much been pretty much done. Uh, if you can see it, you can be it. Um, and a lot to do with our strategies about um, connecting with the community and then engaging with the community. We are looking for duty and inspired by the vision of what can become the bridge to new worlds. Piki mai, kake mai, ho mai te wai ora ki au e tui te huana te moe a te kui e te pō, 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 kaua te a. So out of darkness comes light. So the education is about light. Learning is about life. The journey 
in life is about understanding the world, the world of light. It's about you know, creating that, that sense of belonging, that community. The virtual Murai is really important, both in terms of our staff and our students. Pursuing my freelance dreams and running my own business. To take design and creativity into this technological uh, augmented world uh, to make a difference. Get out there, have fun, keep learning, keep creating, and you never know where it's going to take you. Mai te mapura mohio te mahi pai. Excellent work comes from a bright spark. Mai te mapura mohio. Te mahi pai, excellent work comes from a bright spark. My te māpuru mōhio, te mahi pai, excellent work comes from a bright spark. My te māpura mōhio, te mahi pai, excellent work comes from a bright spark. My te māpura mōhio, te mahi pai, excellent work comes from a bright spark. DaVinci Resolve is one of the world's best free video editing software that combines editing, color correction, visual effects, motion graphics, and audio post-production all in one software tool. Its elegant, modern interface is fast to learn and easy enough for new users, yet powerful for professionals. DaVinci Resolve lets you work faster and at a higher quality because you don't have to learn multiple apps or switch softwares for different tasks. That means you can work with camera original quality images throughout the entire process. It's like having your own post-production studio in a single app. Best of all, by learning DaVinci Resolve, you're learning how to use the exact same tools used by Hollywood professionals. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dan Millwood. I'm the CEO and the founder of Gamefruit. We're a business that's all about making and transforming education, making learning fun through creating activities and learning resources that are based around game design and game development. To do that, we've developed a platform, uh, Gamefruit.com. It's an online tool for making 2D video games. So to support people using our platform, we've had to create lots of resources and learning material around that. We do a lot of work with the Ministry of Education. We do a lot of work with NZQA. And of course, we do a lot of work with schools. Uh, we go into classrooms, talk about game design. We talk about game development. And we also do a lot of work with teachers, teaching teachers how to make games um, so that they can take those skills into their classroom in, in such a way that kind of aligns with their curriculum. Teachers in New Zealand, got a very specific job to do. We kind of have an understanding of what that looks like. If you're an English teacher, you've got to teach kids how to read and write. And so wearing my games industry hat, we might look at that learning outcome and go, okay, well, interactive fiction games, pick path games have been around for a long time. Can we be creating resources in our platform that support those teachers Yeah, so my, my first example around the, if you're creating an inter interactive fiction game or a pick a path game, 
you're, um, you know, it's, it's not really about the coding, but it's about the writing. You're a teacher is having to teach their student how to write in a particular way. So an interactive fiction game is not just a conglomeration of algorithms. It's a whole lot of different story paths that are weaved together in a particular way. And so if a teacher can teach a kid how to write in an interactive fiction context, they're doing something reasonably advanced. You know, they're having a, an in-depth learning experience. And so that kind of idea can be spread across multiple areas of curriculum you can if you're a kid or, uh, and you're into like creating music you could be composing sounds for a game that your classroom is creating if you're into art you could be doing the art for the game if you're a storyteller naturally you might want to be the person in your team that's um, contributing to the story side of your game one of the cool things about game design and development in the classroom is that it, it kind of makes learning a subject accessible to lots of students in that one room at one time the old way of learning is that teacher gets up in front of the class and says a whole lot of stuff and everybody in the class has to yes sir no sir and go through that process but if you can kind of like flip that and if you can think of a classroom as a game studio where lots of little mini humans all with their own different you know unique skill sets then they can be contributing to a project in their own way and therefore feeling included and and part of something bigger and that's what a uh, a learning experience in the 21st century should ideally look like so the way we do it we're our tools gamefruit.com it's all online and there's tutorials contained within gamefruit that teachers and all their students can just work through themselves. We have also created an after school program called Game Dev Club, and it's like Code Club, but more tailored to just, just making games. And um, we train tutors. We go into different areas. We train tutors to, to facilitate those. And those clubs are usually run in schools. So, we encourage teachers to come to those clubs and help support them running. Um, then they're learning skills that they can take back into their classrooms as well. I've been in this industry for about 20 years now, and I remember back in the early days, it was slim pickings, but it's changed a lot, evolved a lot, and there's lots of companies that you could work for or with sprinkled across Aotearoa. My, my pro tip to a lot of the kids that we work with is to um, develop a portfolio, you know, show potential employers that. As somebody who employs people, I tend to want to see examples of work more than I do um, qualification. But if the examples of work come coupled with qualifications, that's even better. A lot of people start, but never finish. It's, you know, t making a game from start to finish and then publishing it is a, is, a, is a lot of work. Don't try and make the next big 3D thing and never finish it and have that as your thing to show off because then you're kind of like, ah, oh, here's someone who can't finish something, which is never a great look. So I, I think it's really important to make, just make lots of stuff. Be creative, refine your, refine and work and nurture and train that um, creative part of your brain and make examples, make stuff that employers can go, wow. So you can always email me on dan at gamefruit.com. Uh, you can find our website online, um, gamefruit.com. And um, yeah, good luck out there.
Unity is a cross-platform game engine. It is also a robust ecosystem designed to enable your success. Advance your Unity skills with live sessions and over 750 hours of on-demand learning content designed for creators at every skill level. Jumpstart your project and get to the finish line faster with an ever-growing catalogue of free and paid assets and tools. Get up to speed on Unity features and workflows and find out how to create and use scripts with thorough, well-organised documentation. Everything you need to build, manage and grow your game. Take your game to the next level with battle-tested services for every stage of the development life cycle. Welcome to the Omen Esports Arena launch. So the University of Waikato is the first New Zealand university to have a dedicated space um, for the university's gaming enthusiasts. Um, we team up with Hewlett Packard's gaming branch, Omen. Uh, who supplied uh, 12 top-of-the-line gaming computers and BB Tech, uh, New Zealand's largest IT and computer retailer who supplied the big screen TVs. My name is Jason Spiller and I have the privilege and pleasure of looking after gaming and esports uh, for Omen by HP in New Zealand. Hi, I'm Brian and I'm the Business Development Manager for the Central North Island for PB Technologies. The Omen Esports Arena uh, in Waikato has, has honestly, it's been, a, it's been a labor of love for a lot of people and it really shows. Uh, just looking around now at the, the reds and the, the, the PCs and the color, it's just, it's amazing. It's really, really cool to see how it's all come together and uh, what a resource it's going to be for the whole Waikato region time that we moved mainstream esports into New Zealand and for a facility such as this run by an organization like University of Waikato, it's just really great to see everybody being involved on a really high level and what it's going to do for our local gaming community. Uh, esports is really just that, that top pinnacle of expression uh, for performance in the gaming world. And for us, we really want to make sure that not only are we supporting every gamer, but we're supporting the aspirational goals of becoming esports athletes. So that's, that's really what it's about for us. Esports means a lot to us because we're providing some of the best gear possible for the people who want to get involved with competitive gaming and esports in general. Uh, so we see esports in New Zealand having a very bright future and because of that we see ourselves being partnered up with a lot of people providing the type of gear you need to have some fun. Our future with University of Waikato Esports and TV Tech is a very bright one. Um, we're only going to expand from here. This is a great building, you can fit multiple players in it. You can host an event such as this one here, but we're going to grow. And as we grow, we're going to need more things, we're going to need more ideas, we're going to need more brain power. And TV Tech's here to offer all of that and help back University of Waikato Esports with whatever you may need for whatever the future holds. Uh, we saw the Omen Esports Arena as a great opportunity to really extend uh, you know, our love of gaming and esports to the Waikato region. Uh, and the arena just proved to be the perfect way, an opportunity for us to do so. Not only really you know, work with the university to provide a great place for students to come, relax and, and honestly learn together and learn about the games uh, and learn about what makes esports great, but also the wider community. So uh, just a win-win for everybody. Hey, I'm Tom Fedenby and I'm the esports coordinator at the University of Waikato. Esports is the competitive side of multiplayer video games. There are a lot of different game types that lend themselves well to esports. The vision for esports at the University of Waikato is to lead the way in esports at the tertiary level in New Zealand. And we're the first university in New Zealand to have an esports space, and the students benefit by having somewhere to call home, where like minded individuals come together as one community to share their passion for gaming. We were very clear right from the early planning stages that to get students interested and involved, we needed the best kit. Omen by HP have helped us achieve that by providing 12 top-of-the-line gaming PCs. AOE Sports is a small community-led organisation that's trying to provide fun, regular tournaments for the casual esports player. We started with a small group of enthusiastic gamers and over the last several years have flowered into a thriving community of thousands of members across Oceania. Thanks to the heart and soul poured into our projects through our volunteer staff, we are able to provide regular weekly tournaments for everyone, from casual beginners with no team experience all the way to die-hard professional squads. We believe in fun, 
free, accessible gaming for all. You can find out more about us at www.aoesports.com.au. From our office on Cuba Street, Dinosaur Polo Club builds games that bridge the gaps between people. Since 2013, our games have been played by over 7 million people, won awards, and we've partnered with companies like Apple and Google to bring our work to the international stage. We draw inspiration from real-world design to create games that make everyday concepts fun and engaging for our wonderfully diverse audience. As a studio, we've helped Wellington flourish as a center of game development. But most importantly, we've brought millions of people together through play. The esports industry in New Zealand has a lot of potential for growth. At the moment, if you look at where we're at in terms of the global dynamic, we're a little bit behind the eight ball. Uh, but that just gives us a whole lot of room to grow. There are an amazing amount of professional and up and coming aspiring professional players in New Zealand. Uh, and the Spark Esports Hub is a first step in really giving them the ability to grow their skills and talent in an environment that's built for them, uh, setting them up for the international stage. Logitech is committed to the development of esports and gaming across the globe. So it'll be part of a space right here in New Zealand that will power New Zealand's esport athletes, as well as finding emerging talents in New Zealand is very exciting. The space will be powered by Logitech G Pro Range, designed by esport athletes for esport athletes. The training rooms in the centre will be kitted out with blue microphones and Logitech Stream Cams for live streaming. And the G923 Racing Sims will be on hands for racing enthusiasts. Yeah, so esports is one of the biggest and fastest growing industries in the world when it comes to entertainment. New Zealand has a big esports following already. And because we already support New Zealand with music and entertainment, streaming services, sports, this is a natural extension of our current entertainment offer for our customers and the rest of New Zealand. So this facility is a critical piece of infrastructure to put New Zealand and Auckland on the map as an esports destination. It's the first step in really connecting us to the wider esports audience. And what that means for Kiwis is that they're going to have a place where they can come and physically be together rather than behind the screen and really have the benefit of being able to talk collectively, being able to plan, being able to strategize and communicate in game that provides that real level up in terms of their gameplay to help compete with international teams. This is going to be such a great space for pro players to come together and compete, but also to enthuse budding gamers who are considering esports as a full-time occupation. Scratch is another free-to-use game development program. Scratch is designed especially for ages 8 to 16, but is used by people of all ages. Millions of people are creating Scratch projects in a wide variety of settings, including homes, schools, museums, libraries and community centres. With Scratch, you can program your own interactive stories, games and animations, and share your creations with others in the online community. Scratch helps young people learn to think creatively reason systematically and work collaboratively. Essential skills for life in the 21st century. Scratch is designed, developed and moderated by the Scratch Foundation, a non-profit organization It is provided free of charge. Let's do or die to win! Go, go, go. Go. Has reverse, sweet, Meg! Stay 
Aiding Hamio out. Oh, he throws out the same oh. board. The clean's oh. old. He's taking him down the only set. Oh, no. Carl Mennon's got a random opposition sitter. So this is going to be some top-tier play. The Renegades are going to clinch this out. And the time is running low. Stream just teasing and taunting. That's a great shot. He's been playing good football. He came out of the box very, very good. The bomb is at the start. TA, he could find this. Still here. Here we oh, go. Yes, it's cool, my little papa. I like that. Let's go. Basically, dream big. Anything is possible. Well, the Terran player does manage to hold him. The other supplies even out. A little bit easy to catch out. You know, right? That's kind of what you're trying to do if you're the 2K player. I mean, this place is like state of the art. We're in the heart of the Sky Tower at the moment. Incredible amount of resources gone into it. Step it up another notch, and we've got the Black Burns, the All Blacks, and four special guests. <laughs> You're in the wall. We've also got some amazing players coming in here from the NRL. Alongside me, I think the man needs no introduction. A superstar from Penrith himself. Another awesome app that we love is Blender. Blender is a free and open source 3D computer graphics software toolset used for creating animated films, visual effects, art, 3D printed models, motion graphics, interactive 3D applications, virtual reality and computer games. It supports the entirety of the 3D pipeline, modeling, rigging, animation, simulation, rendering, compositing and motion tracking even video editing and game creation. Agency fool. You foiled me once, broke yourselves against my forces before sealing me away in this wretched prison. But I have wheels turning. Claw is no petty organization of crime and terror. It is my finely tuned machine instrument of my grand design. And you think you can stop me with your transformation technology? Very well. We shall play this game. And each move you make will bring you one step closer to your own destruction.
Yo, everybody. My name is Marcus, a.k.a. DJ Blaze. I'm here at Digital Natives Academy, and I've been the director and the producer of the Getting to Game series. I hope that everybody has enjoyed the series and has managed to gain something from it. Firstly, I'd like to give a massive shout out to the Ministry of Education for working alongside us in this endeavor. It is great to see them recognizing that not only is gaming a huge influence in young people's lives today, but that there are also legitimate career pathways within the gaming industry. Next, I want to thank our amazing hosts who have helped guide the way during the series and the enormous contribution that they have made. Without you, this series would not have been what it is, and I cannot thank you enough for your help and support. To our amazing guests who have taken the time to inform and inspire our young Tamariki with their knowledge and passion for games, we cannot thank you enough. We really appreciate it. And thank you to everybody else who has helped out along the way. I do have to give a special mention to Lassa and to Mana for helping out with the B-roll footage, and also to Peter for helping put together the initial timeline as well. Your help has been greatly appreciated. And for those budding film students out there who might notice there's more than a few continuity issues, just go with it. The way this has worked out is basically turned into a running gag, so it is what it is. And once again, a big thank you from us to everybody out there who's been involved for the project or even just taking the time out to watch it. We appreciate you all. I'm going to give it back over to our host now to sign off for the day. Peace out. Norere Huama, that's it from Get Into Gaming, and I hope you feel informed and inspired by all the mahi, all the content, and all the talent we've had all week. And if you want to know more about gaming or all the resources that we've delivered this week, visit our website, www.getintogaming.nz. Kona na tēnei, kwa mutunga mahi, over and out.